It's sort of like a big deal that I'm starting over because I didn't think I was going to do it again. But here I am, doing it again, and I'm very excited about it. Do you guys like your new friends? Welcome back to my channel, and for those of you that are new, welcome. Today is a very exciting video for me because I am finally restarting my flock of chickens now that we have our run built. So super exciting. I am going to be in this moment going to get started on my new flock. I have a friend of mine that is graciously giving me full grown hens and a rooster so that we can start our flocks. I'm very excited. But before that, we need to do some rearranging and some cleaning inside of the coop to get it prepared for brand new chickens. Since we've added the run, we had to add the door right there, which made us have to rearrange the inside of the coop where the roost bars are and where the nesting boxes are. So we need to go ahead and do that, pressure wash the coop and get it ready for just a brand new flock so that it can live here and thrive. Also, you guys, if you notice something new about me, I did color my hair, so still me, but no longer blonde for right now. Anyways, you guys, if you guys are excited for today's video, if you guys are excited to see us get our new flock, make sure you go and give this video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel down below and let's get right into this vlog. So before we go get our new flock, there's a couple things that we need to do inside of the chicken coop. So we are going to be rearranging the coop since the run is on that side and the automatic door will be on that side. So these bars need to come down and they basically need to go over to this side. We're gonna be flipping the coop and then this nesting box set will go on that side as well. And then we are gonna run the pressure washer through this and it will dry while we are going and getting our chickens. So Mike's gonna get to it and start by removing the bars. Now that the bars are removed from the coop, it's time to get this coop cleaned up. So he's bringing in the pressure washer and he is going to pressure wash the entire inside of the coop, starting with the floor. So this coop is pretty dirty, so we don't expect it to get it perfect because it is a chicken coop after all, but we are going to do our best to give a nice fresh start to our new flock of chickens. Now that the floor has been pressure washed pretty good, he's going to start to take off some things off the wall of the coop. And then while I was editing this really fast time lapse, I noticed that he was showing something to the camera and it made me laugh really hard once I slowed it down. And he actually saved a little lizard from getting washed out and he wanted to show you guys it. So this is him showing you it. Anyways, back to where he goes. He's just taking the nest boxes off the wall so that he can move them over to the right side of the coop since the whole coop is getting rearranged and flipped towards the other side so that the little door is usable out to the run. Now it's time to put those roost bars back up. So he's just screwing back in the support bars and then adding the rest of the roost bars to the chicken coop. Now that the roosting bars are back up and the nesting box has been moved, he's just doing a one final over with the pressure wash and the coop is nice and rearranged for the new flock. So the inside of the coop is now pressure washed. Obviously not super perfect because this is all white paint. So it's just stained a bit dirty, but it is nice and pressure washed and ready for new birds. As you can see, we have our roost bars over here. We have that door shut, but I will keep that option as a door. Originally, I was gonna close it down completely and get rid of it, but if I ever wanna keep it open to let them you know, go out this way, I can. If I wanted to do some supervised um, free range time, and then we have our nest boxes over there, and then this is a clear path for them to be able to leave the coop and go out into the run. So this is where we're at. I do need to get some bedding for the floor so that we can keep it nice and clean. I need to put my nest box liners in there. But other than that, we are ready for new chickens. Hey, Minnie. So we also pressure washed the water that we have and the feed dish. I'm not sure, maybe I'll get a new one, I don't know. But right now, it's usable, so we're gonna stick with that. We are going to load this cage up into the truck so that we can put the birds in here. This does look kind of like a tight fit, but it's a very short drive from my friend's house to back here where the coop is. But they are gonna be kind of 
tight in here. It's kind of dark out, so it's hard to show you, but we got an assortment of birds. We have a whole flock again. I'm so excited to show you guys tomorrow when it's daylight out, but we're gonna just go ahead and put them in the coop, but it's pretty dark, so I'll just show you guys in the morning. We're here at Tractor Supply to go get our new chickens, some stuff that they need. Guys, so you know my love for these nest box pads, and I always buy them on Tractor Supply, but I hadn't bought them. So I'm at Tractor Supply and they're here. I do believe that they're more expensive. Yes, I think they're more expensive than Amazon, but hey, this is convenience to me because I'm here and I need them. They do have these cool ones. These are nest box turfs, which I think are really cool, but I'm more of a be able to throw it away, to be honest. So I'm gonna get these for the girls. Look how cute these feeder bases are. Oh my gosh. They are like wrapped, so cute. And I really like the feeling of them. I don't have chicks, but I think these are so cute. I love these. Oh my gosh, I'm down there too. You can actually see this one's kind of not really well done to be honest, but who am I to judge? So cute. I also want to get these scratch screens for the girls just to put in their picnic table as a little gift, a housewarming gift. I just filled up the girls feed now I'm going to give them their little treat which is this scratch grain mix into their cute little picnic bench whenever you guys see the picnic bench you always ask where I got it so I just put it on Amazon I'll actually leave it listed in the description down below oh no I don't think I opened this properly let's try again here we go breeds here and we definitely need some names since I have a smaller flock I think that I can have names that still be attainable so I'm gonna introduce you to some of them that are out here still some have already gone up into roost for the night because it is about seven o'clock so they are starting to go up into their actual coop this chicken right here is a Splash Moran and she is loving these little snacks. Splash Moran is like one of my favorite chicken breeds ever and I used to have a Splash named Gloria. This one right here is a Barnavelder. I was just feeling like I think she might be double penciled but I'm not really the best of that but her markings here do look kind of double penciled. Then I have another one of my favorite breeds is a Salmon Favorelli and I really like her. She has like a funny beard. Let's see if we can show you. <laughs> There it is. Then I have my Easter egger and that type of hen leaves like green bluish eggs. So those are definitely not my favorite breeds. I do like their little like bearded cheeks, but my favorite part is that they do give colorful eggs. Then I think this is like a well summer. I can't really remember. Then I have my golden laced Polish right there. So as you can see, she has the funky head, but she's so cool. I really like her. She's a nice chicken. Back over here at the snacks, like I said, that's my Splash Moran, my Barnavelder, the Well Summer, and then I actually have a Svart Hona, which is an all black chicken. Every bit about that chicken is black down to her feet, all the way to her comb. And then my one and only rooster over there, he is a like barnyard mix. I don't remember what he's mixed with, but he is really pretty and he's actually a really nice rooster. Fun fact, every morning he jumps up on this tree stump and he crows. It's the funniest thing because he just has to be the highest thing and every single morning he stands up there and he seriously crows that wasn't very nice another one of my chickens just jumped out of the coop and it's this little that one that just went in there she's a cochin and she is a bantam she's very cute and small i've never had a bantam cochin before so very excited about that they are loving the picnic today so those are some of my girls i'm actually gonna go into the coop see if anybody else is in there they might probably actually walk out here as soon as i go in there because they're not fully like comfortable with me just yet but they're getting there and actually when i'm filming this part like we've had them for now like a good couple weeks so they're coming around a lot more before they used to be a lot more scared of me but definitely they don't think i am their complete friend just yet i think as time's going on they're getting a lot better but i am gonna go in and i'm going to 
replace some of the nest liners in there because like I said, we've had them for a little bit now. They've been getting it dirty kind of quicker than I anticipated for. So I'm going to switch out some of those nest box liners really quickly. So like I said, I'm really excited that they have these attraction supply because sometimes I forget to get them on Amazon. When my old flock that we had, it actually was on like auto ship through Amazon. So it's still a really convenient way. But when I saw these attraction supply, I was so excited. I've drawn a crown. No, this is not food guys. They're nest box liners. You smell them, it smells like straw, but it's not. Well, maybe it is in some form. No wonder you guys keep bugging me about this. Quit it. Really? Okay, so I think I just need to replace two as I get attacked by my goats. One and two. Now I have to throw them on top of here because... Because of the goats. This is the setup, and I've actually already collected two eggs today, and they've given me two more, so that's very exciting. I'm going to replace this one because I use this one a lot. So I can tell this one's getting dirty. It's pretty dirty underneath there. And you guys would be really proud of me because I've been collecting eggs, you guys. Okay, so that one's nice and replaced now. I've been very consistent. We haven't had any rotten eggs in here, any bad issues with eggs now, and it's been like a good three weeks or so that I've had these chickens now. I've been collecting eggs, I've been washing eggs, I've been storing eggs. I'm excited to give away some eggs to some of my coworkers. So I'm very excited about that. But I figured you guys would be really proud because I always tell you guys, I don't really like having chickens for the eggs per se because I'm not really good at collecting eggs, but I've been a lot better. So I'm really excited about that. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and take this liner out too and just replace this one and Put a new liner in there. All right, got my two eggs and we're off. Do you guys like your new friends? Our new flock? It's kind of funny because obviously the chickens are in a run, so the goats are always standing over here watching them. And it's not because I think that they're observing these chickens, which would be kind of funny if it was because it's like a real life, like instead of for us, a fish tank, it's a chicken tank but truly I think it's because they're always looking to get their feed. Because every time we bring feed out here, like you guys saw, they were attacking me for my nest box liners. But they, for some reason, goats really like to eat chicken feed, even though chicken feed is what can kill them. So it's not in their best interest to eat the feed. Right, Lily? You shouldn't eat the feed. Good boy. All right, you guys, well, there you have it. That is my new flock. I can't believe I've completely started over. I wasn't sure if I ever was going to. I got into chickens like five years ago, no, six or seven years ago now. And I have loved having chickens ever since. I've had small flocks. I've had really large flocks. I've had a flock of really cool rare breeds. I've raised a lot of baby chicks. I've had hens that have hatched out chicks. I have done so much with chickens when it comes to dealing with disease and illness throughout a whole flock wiping out and everything and at one point I felt like I was the chicken master in the last seven years. I knew everything and anything that there was to know about chickens and then one day I decided that I didn't want to know everything and anything about chickens because it actually became exhausting having a big flock and honestly chickens can cost a lot of money in the long run. When you have a big flock Feed's expensive, building runs like this are expensive, getting a coop that can fit this many chickens is expensive, and when they're not free range, having to buy them extra scratch, oyster shells, anything like that for calcium. And then with chickens, when one chicken gets sick in your flock, especially in a run like this, your whole flock can basically get infiltrated and then you spend a bunch of money trying to save your flock and buying everything off the shelves at your local tractor supply or feed store trying to save your flock. So I have done that though. I've spent a lot of years and a lot of time investing my knowledge in learning about chickens and trying to save many different flocks that I've had. And I had at least one or two chickens throughout the entire of starting my chickens until the end here, until I no longer could, until a fox wiped out my entire flock. Now I do really quickly before I end this video I want to address the one chicken that I did have. So unfortunately the fox ended up getting that one chicken because while we were in the big process of creating our run we tried our best to keep that chicken alive and we did for a very long time. And just shortly before we finished the run, I can't really even say that the reason why the chicken isn't here anymore is because of the fox but that's what I'm going to assume because the chicken is no longer here. So unfortunately now I have 
a run and this won't happen again. But I will say starting over with chickens was kind of like a big process for me because once they were all killed, I did not think that I was gonna get back into chickens. I felt like this was my time to stop my chicken career even though I don't really do anything to chickens. I don't sell chickens, I don't sell chicks and I don't sell eggs and I hardly eat eggs. I just felt like that it was time to hang up my chicken gloves. But Mike made me a really cool run and one of my friends was downsizing her flock and she gifted me all of these brand new hens because I definitely did not want to go through the process of having to start over with chicks because as cute as they are, I just didn't want to deal with them right now, especially with having a young baby. So I felt like everything just aligned perfectly and I was destined to have chickens again. So I'm very excited for my new flock and it really is nice having a smaller flock. I kind of go down a bad rabbit hole of wanting more chickens. I was in tractor supply today and I was thinking about getting chicks, but I didn't get any. So, so that's me rambling about my journey with chickens and why this is sort of like a big deal that I'm starting over with chickens because I didn't think I was gonna do it again, but here I am doing it again and I'm very excited about it. So if you guys like this video, if you guys like meeting my new flock, make sure you go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel down below so you don't miss any videos like this. And of course, make sure you have those post notifications on. All right, you guys, we love you and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.